ask anybody, you can just come on the stage. Rajesh has done a wonderful job. Uh, my co-quiz partner, the quiz masters. Uh, we have got two types of quiz masters today. One is T.R. Rajesh, who is also a partner of Madhukari Regange and uh, a brilliant person and uh, has been very helpful in the IDD committee also in drafting the guidance note as well as the uh, indirect tax certification course as well as the audit reports also which we are coming across. So the technical portion of the quiz on the indirect taxes would be done by Rajesh. The non-technical portion which would be done would be done by me. And the rule would be that the quiz master's decision is final. Okay, so because uh, in the last two days we have seen that there are lots of divergent views in the whole subject. So we will have the quiz master's decision as final. And in case I and Rajesh differ, then my answer would be final because I don't know the law. <laughs> Agreed? Yeah. So that is the way we do it. So Rajesh Bhai, would you like to announce the eight names or directly pick up the slips and do it? Okay, what we will do is, we will not give you the position 1 to 8 also. Uh, there was a request from some of the audiences, the, the participants that don't give the names of the people, what marks they got and all. So we will not give 1 to 8 also. The 8 people who have won, their names have been put into slips. Okay, and this slips we will pick up and as and when they come, we will be giving the groups like 1, 2, 3 and 4 groups are there. So is it okay with all of you? Okay, the first list, I think Rajesh, you could pick up two names and tell us who the lucky ones are. I do not know whether uh, people have sat according to the slips. Uh, the first list is Nilesh Sabu and Anushri. Welcome. So a big round of applause please. Uh, we go by the second group. Uh, you are not supposed to carry any materials, books, papers except a scribbling pad map. Uh, yeah. uh, if you uh, want we can have a security check also. A scanning can be done. And we have a lady officer also to scan. <laughs> Yeah, a big round of applause for both of them for reaching this level of the first quiz by IDT department, division. Next. Uh, the blessings of Tirupati. Bhagya Teja and uh, Chandra Hasa. Chandra Hasa. Yeah, welcome. So you have a beautiful combo of Bangalore and Tirupati here. has partnered with me in writing lots of books, articles, T. Arvind and Avinash Acharya. A big round of applause for both of them. Welcome sir. You could be part of the team 3. Uh, Puja will require the scorers. Uh, and the last two, who should it be? Anyone? Any guesses? Come on. Bache kitne ya? I can't even say kitne yaad bhi the. Okay. Any guesses? We'll give a lucky prize of one chocolate to anybody who guesses. Myself, I was part. Uh, so confident about Atika. What about yourself? <laughs> that's, that's cheating. Atika, please come. And one more is? Shiv Kumar. Welcome. A big round of applause to all the eight winners of the first round. And we directly enter into the finals. So what shall we do? Uh, we initially have... Please sit down, all of you. Uh, you might have to come this side a little because uh, we may have questions which are going to be displaced across. So Pooja, the displacement done. Uh, 
So what we are going to do is we are going to have totally six rounds initially. If there is a tiebreaker, we may extend by a few rounds. Uh, I think you should see the audience more than the stage over there. Then when you have the questions, you could look into it. Uh, is it fine? Okay. And uh, as far as possible, the participants are requested to murmur, not to whisper also, or not to speak a little louder, because you would be giving the benefit to your opponents. Uh, the first round is going to be a technical round on GST, where Mr. Rajesh is going to... No projections. No, no problem. You have the questions with you, right? Presentation is made with answers. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rajesh was so confident I'll be in the top eight. And I need the answers to answer that. You have made it with the answers. So then in I can ask. No, if you have the answers, even I can ask. If without the answers, then I have the difficulty. The question is that I can't project as or that. that. Okay. So, this is called as team 1 or team A. What do you prefer? Anything. Team A, B, C and D. So, the first round would be a direct question round. Uh, if you answer it correctly, it will be 10 points. Pooja, please note down the point, point marks. If you don't answer it, it passes on to the next team. They will get around 7, 5 and 2. Right? And... Uh, if the answer is partially correct, you may get zero. The decision will give it to the judges, the quiz masters. And uh, the first question, Rajesh Bhai, we asked to team A. Is it technical, is it? Technical, obviously. It's a technical session. And what we will do is, before we go to the first question, can we have an introduction? What we will do is, we will try to mix this with quiz as well as an interaction, as well as a discussion. And uh, the first, I think we should have the introduction of the two people who came in first. Ladies first. Uh, hello everyone, this is Anushree Gupta from Jaipur. I'm into practice dealing with indirect taxation and we have a software company which is into development of software like computer access and features. Uh, Anushree is also probably going to be one of the faculties for this audit 9 and 9C. Her name was that in the list, I think, which was uh, sent for the council for approval. Hello everyone, I am Nilesh Sabu. I am from Pune. I am doing a practice in indirect access since last 10 years. Thank you. Okay. Uh, would you like to say that, why are you expecting to come into this group, Ram? Uh, the simple reason which attracted us it was the first RRC which we saw on indirect tax and that is the first trigger point. Second thing, it was hosted by a white lord branch which was under the chairmanship of the indirect tax chairman. So, and the topics was really interesting and some things around the different from the regular topics. So, that's why I came here. And another of course reason was the networking with the people. No, I said, were you expecting to be in the topic? Top 8 business. Okay. I was expected Sanjay sir in a talk with uh, and another was Abhiram which I was expected Including yourself or not? Okay. <laughs> okay. I was not. What about you Anushree? Were you confident you would be in the talk with? Actually just for some of information, there was a tie towards the end. So in the last leg uh, we had to do uh, tip also towards the end. So it is not only this eight, it's again uh, not the major number difference. Between the How many of them were there? Four were, four were there with the one more was there. No, if two are there, then we can make it five as a team. Just one. If we can take two more people, you want ten people to be here, then there will not be audience much. Okay. Uh, so the first question, Rajesh, to team A. question is not like you cannot get fast one could be only one question to the respective teams. Is the questions are not going to be like you know one I ask question so it gets passed on. It is the first round it is going to be essentially a yes or no sort of a thing in the first round. The second round is going to be with an explanation okay. uh, with much more detailing and the third round is going to be a little more you know with complications and an explanation with uh, things. So, it is uh, 
three rounds in, in between there will be a one month round of a so, general quiz is coming into picture. Okay, so the one thing you have to understand is that the GST law is not that simple. Uh, the government came out with the law with so many changes and so are your quiz masters doing, <laughs> not to be blamed. Okay. Yeah, the first is one question. Uh, the direct points will be 10 or 0. After question. Question to team A. A shop sells taxable and exempted products to the same person, B to C. Is it required to issue a tax invoice and bill of supplies separately? The person who answers in the mic would be fine. You can issue an invoice only and in that exempt and taxable both can be included. In fact, there is an option to issue invoice come bill of supply. Okay. So answer is correct. So there is no requirement that you know for the supply. exempt supply you have to issue a separate bill of supply. Uh, one tax come bill of supply, I mean tax invoice come bill of supply can be issued as it was rightly said. So I think uh, answer was correct. You think about it? <laughs> 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 huh? No, I'll comment sir, I love pulling legs. <laughs> but I am on the camera now, I have to be careful. Okay. Uh, recently the TDS provisions no, once, were introduced. Once again, we didn't have that interaction. Okay. Could you introduce yourself before we go ahead? Uh, good evening to you. I am uh, Teja from Tirupati, practicing chair. Hello everybody, I am Chandra Asa, partner of BBC and Company Bangalore. Yeah. The question starts now. You all know that recently the TDS provisions under the GST law was made effective. So there is a requirement of a registration for a person who is required to take a work tax deduction. Whether a separate registration is required for such person who is required to make a TDS or if he is already registered merely some changes or additions into that particular registration is going to be done. Separate registration is required. You are sure about it? Yes. Harish. Yeah. So, yes, uh, so, this means that a separate registration means an additional fees to all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Arvind, your team could introduce yourself. I am Arvind, practicing chartered accountant. I am partner in AVT and other states. Hello, uh, myself, Avinash. Bangalore. Question to team number three. Under the Central GST Act, section 31, specifically deals with certain subject. What is that topic or subject? with section 31 deals with. Can you repeat the question? Uh, section 31 of the CGST Act deals with a particular subject. Which subject does it deal with? Uh, the other three teams are wanting to reply. <laughs> but no passing on. <laughs> Debit note and trade notes answer is not correct. It is actually 31 deals with the invoicing, tax invoice. Uh, a good attempt. I think uh, you went a step ahead after the tax invoice is raised, how do you reduce the amounts and uh, that is the reason. Uh, you went to 34 instead of 31. Although when the numbers come in 30s, you always get confused. Uh, we request the team 4 to introduce yourself, team D. Please introduce yourself. And the introduction should not be just, I am in chartered accountant, we all are. I am into indirect taxes, we all are. Let's talk something personal also about what we are. Hello everyone. I am Atika Agrawal. I am from Jaipur. And uh, I am de uh, dealing with uh, third gen my third generation practice in indirect taxes. You are third generation? 
by <laughs> I am handling the third generation practice uh, with my husband. Both of us are practicing in indirect access only. So both are Both and life. Thank you. Hello, I'm Shiv Kumar. I have been in practice for the last nine years. I hail from Karnataka, but currently reside in Kerala. Question number two. Question two. Team number D or four. D. A, D. D. The system of coding in respect of our goods which we adopted, we call it in the short form as HSM. What is the full form of that particular thing? Hawaii system of nomenclature. Good, correct? So, wonderful. Uh, at the end of the first round, we have three teams which are at 10. Team C is lagging behind a little. They missed out at 31 and 34. And that's one place where you have to be a little careful, Arvind. Uh, the other thing is that uh, we finished the first round, so we have not yet met our audience today and knowing about them, that's more important, right? So, what I want to request you again is that please give a detailed introduction about you, your personal hobbies, your interests, we have got enough time today. And this is the only way that after you go back from here, and even after 5 years or 10 years when we meet again, we will know each other by name, we will know each other by face and we will say, yeah, we were part of the first RRC. So can we have the introduction? So we start with the teams back. Uh, Mr. Puri, my Rumi. Sunday. Sir, I am from... Uh, I am from Kalkata. Basically, I am from Orissa. Everybody. Uh, so apart from this, what he told like, the my past uh, appearance in GST. So I put some of the questions which say I do not do. Anyhow, within uh, this, uh, I am doing some of the social work. I am associated with one of that uh, unique hospital in India. That is the Harupaya Charitable Hospital. It registered under section 12 AA, ADG and HCR. It is running from 2013. And every month I usually donate two lakh. So <laughs> sometimes I have around three to four lakh in my pocket, but at the end I could not even get a glass of water to drink. And it is a hospital we have created for the person who have been abandoned or not looked after by their family. It is totally charitable. We never collect single money from the patient. So from 2013 it is going on, it is on the land of 25 acres. Which state? It is, it is in the state of Odisha in the coastal district of Baleshar. So it is neither industrial belt, neither your that is mining belt. So getting fund is tough. So anyhow the local MP and some of that trust that is Sitaram Jindal Foundation of Delhi, that Golden Jubilee Foundation of LIC, then your uh, Ramakrishna Mission of Belod, Calcutta, and also some of my friends from in and around India and abroad, they are helping. So this is the uh, chance he has given because he is staying with me. So I think all of you can think about this, how fund to be raised. This is my sincere request to all of you. Most of all, I have given brochure to all of you. So if anybody has not received, I can say Thank you, sir. Forgot you. Okay. Thank you, Sanjay Suri. Uh, Puri, sorry. Uh, a very charitable job which is doing across and so the winners could also contribute your profits to the association if you get anything. Okay, the one more introduction you'd have. Uh, Mr. Gandhi, would you like to introduce yourself sir? One of the senior most members here.
I'm originally from the Kamau district of Telangana. All of you should know the year how the process went on from the decades ago since I'm 40 years ago than this year. In Hyderabad, one of the great young former men went for art teacher. He asked a premium of 5,000 rupees and six months to do free. Afterwards, he will decide to do art This is how he pushed me to come to Bangalore. And everybody remember him, I'm thankful to him. But before I come to Bangalore, I would not be like this. I would not be a job that content. I am not even a passport in this way if I not come to Bangalore. Bangalore will be different in company with other things because I came from Hyderabad uh, to Bangalore. As a chartered accountant, really, this is a really good place, less risk oriented in comparing to other places, especially in uh, Andhra and Telangana. As we all know, being in our community, I am discussing these uh, few things. Here, at least, you can see some books of accounts where you want to carry a little file. In either world, that is not there in most of it. No books of the nothing. You have to certify. See the risk level. Those days are okay to manage, but not to discuss. Anyway, I'm practicing since 1986 and the key guys have been We have three partners. One is in Ayurveda, two of them here. One of my partners is senior most of 1949 Chartered Accountant. He is around 90 years old. He worked for ABB and so many big companies and all. Probably same as my partner, I am his partner. And I am an insolvency professional. My main area is uh, tax, certain schedule cases, and also audits, and forensic audit. I am an environmental leader, I could forensic audit and uh, experience reports, which we did a, a commandable job for our family. Honestly, I request all of you, time has come for all of us to upkeep our fraternity's name and values, which I am following all along and I do follow that. If Gandhi doesn't follow the values, who else will? <laughs> okay, Rajesh, we go into the second round. It's again going to be a GST round and we start with team B now. Okay, now we, because team C is complaining that we are 10 marks behind, 10 points behind. So can we have some more interest into the game? So what Rajesh has suggested is, this will also not be a pass over round. It will be a one on one question. Because amendments are part of GST, you know it. Right? So, and this time, whoever answers correct would get 20 points. And otherwise it will be zero. So it's going to be more challenging. Uh, we would give you time enough. We have got enough time with us. We will not push you to answer the questions. And whatever Rajesh says is final, subject to Sanjay. Uh, in this round, it is not merely yes or no sort of a thing. You need to further explain a reasoning for it, why and how. So, even the answering reasoning, if it is not fully correct, you will not be awarded any marks. So, it is not okay. Somewhere I would almost no. You have to be fully clear, and the answer should be. Up to the point covering all the aspects relating to that particular question. Can you give them half a mark if you feel it's nearly correct? No. No. So you please see that you satisfy him. Either you use all the pieces. <laughs> okay. Yeah, your question starts now. So it starts from reverse order now? From that side. B, okay. The special economic zone, when they sell the goods, the domestic tariff area, whether the ACZ unit is liable to pay GST on it. Whether ACZ is liable to pay GST on the supply of goods to DTA. If you have a doubt, you can ask what is DTA. Anybody from the audience is also ready? Yes, Okay. So, <laughs> I said, are you ready? <laughs> Don't get charged. It's
it's Ready Mounts. Ready points. So we have to give uh, a yes or no and then a explanation for this. Yes sir, it has to be paid. It has to be paid. To be paid. Okay, and reason? Reason being import of the goods is uh, I mean GST is liable to be paid. Uh, uh, do you want to repeat the question again? I'll repeat the question again. Listen carefully. Whether ESC is a unit when they supply goods to DTA unit. Whether goods, okay, whether SEZ unit is liable to pay GST. So, um, SEZ is not liable to pay, the person who is importing has to pay. Why? Because if we treat it as import, uh, your the answer earlier was different. different. Do you want to change it again and again or no, no, no. you stand by this answer? The same answer which I have said. No, first you said yes. Yes means the person who is importing has to, the GST has to be paid. I said, whether the SEZ unit is liable. That's why right. yes. I said, do you want to hear the question again? Yes, that's, uh, SEZ is not liable to pay. It has, GST is liable to pay. But the importer will pay. I, do you want to listen to the question again? Sir, <laughs> <Yes, yes. laughs> the SEZ person is not liable to pay. Right. So, is it that, no, I have, a, I, have a, I have not completed, you have not got the full answer. So, I am just asking that, why and under which provision? Provisions and all. <laughs> under which provision? I am not telling the section or something. No, why? Why effectively? You only told, okay, this is to be done. What is the reason, reasoning for it? You said it is an import. Yes. Which is it? Special economic zone is treated as the, I mean it is not treated as part of India. And no, if that is the case, anyhow, they are beyond the question, I am just asking, if that is the case, then why not for service? No, assuming service. you are right. Assuming, assuming you are right. Why is it not for service? Service, uh, it is clearly said that import of service, your side has to be paid. Okay. Anyway, I think the answer was correct. It is mentioned that I will give further explanation to this particular thing. Uh, one second. Uh, there was an answer here. You said yes. Why? In context of service, I don't know. Oh, in context of service, then I will not give it. Uh, anyway, you could introduce yourself so we can finish this also. Then we can get the answer. My name is uh, Ratna. I come from a company, Maitri Limited. I have been working there for since uh, 9 years. Uh, I was uh, in, uh, given in charge of implementing the GST, which has been successfully implemented in the company. And if you go to the personal life, I have my, my wife by the name Asha and uh, my son Hitesh. Uh, okay. He is an interested part for SZ question and uh, And he gave you the answer also, you didn't hear. And luckily he said yes. No, he said yes, and if you would have heard it, you would have been wrong. <laughs> That's why I changed it to say he's already charged up. Okay, thank you very much for coming across. Now, Rajesh, you could complete the answer. Yeah. Uh, the answer is correct, so they get 20 points. But if you see the legally, legality of it, from where you do get this particular provision, etc., it is not from the GST Act at all. This has to be by virtue of a the SEZ provisions where any good which is cleared from SEZ unit to the DTA, it says that goods are liable to be payment of tax and further rules do mention that it shall be treated as an import and the person who is buying the goods or the procuring of goods being a DTA unit, they will file a bill of entry. Uh. Thank you Rajesh and now we give it to Arvind and team, team C, uh, you have a tough challenge, you are already behind 10 points and uh, the question if you miss out then you would be way behind, then we will have to raise the points further. Yeah, yeah Arvind, now the, okay. your time starts now. You have to listen to the question carefully. <laughs> Claim of depreciation on the value of the GST paid 
on the capital goods is the option of the registered person whether this statement is true or false. With the option of the SSC, if he claims the uh, GST credit, he cannot claim the deposition of that. Okay, just revisit your the second part of your answer. So if, if he claims the GST credit, then on that portion he can, uh, depression will not be. Suppose one lakh rupees is the value of the goods. So 18 percent is the GST on that. So on the 18 percent GST, he has an option to claim it as input as credit. If he has not claimed it, then he can claim depression on that. Correct. You know, thing is that it is not a here restriction. If you claim a depreciation, restriction in GST. It is not that you, if you claim a GST, restriction on depreciation. Same. No, you, uh, your answer was correct. Okay. The basic thing what Rajesh is trying to say is the emphasis is that if you have claimed depreciation, then input credit is disallowed. That's the basic thing. But what you did is you went the other way around to say that you claim the input tax credit, don't claim the depreciation. But your actual answer should have been, when the question asks is the option, you should have been more specific. This time we'll give you because you're running behind and you've been my ex-partner in the books. <laughs> Agreeable? Okay, so... I will have to just give some explanation to this particular thing. Yeah, touch. Uh, since this depreciation we saw is the input tax, especially on the capital goods. In your accounting balance, obviously when you are accounting the current taxes as a current asset, once you are not capitalized, obviously will not be capitalizing the value of the tax. So you will be claiming a deposition on the value, excluding that. By chance, in the earlier days when it's not audited, etc., it used to be so happen that the income tax depreciation should have been, would have been computed separately. They would have add back as per the books and claim back the depreciation separately. So in such a scenario, there were a power cases where they were claiming a depreciation also on full, including that value of the taxes, whereas in the taxes credit also they were being claimed. So the chances of that adding back and deduction while doing so, uh, in a, especially in a 3CD, etc., there while the workings part, they may not look into the accounting part, they may only, they may take the entire invoice value including taxes. So there they need to be uh, little for carefulness while verification and checking as far as the things are concerned. Okay. Yeah. So one more introduction from here, the back benches, LLBs. Hi all, my name is Amritesh Durla. As you know, I am practicing CA. Uh, apart from practice, uh, I will tell more about my personal thing. Once uh, my marriage got over, I had no option but to start running. So now I... Are you away from your wife or...? <laughs> <laughs> running in life. Okay. So now I am... I have ended up being a half marathon now. And uh, I am a cyclist also. I can go up to 150 kilometers in a day on a cycle. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> like that. And uh, all sorts of traditional accounting in uh, practice, I am saying, and all sorts of accounting, auditing, all that I do. Thank you. Uh, we have got a few friends here who are not married. Please don't make your husband run like a poacher. Uh, we go to Team D now. A franchiser company will give franchises to many companies across the country, but they will not have their own outlets in those, those respective states. Whether they need to take a registration in all the places where their franchises run the outlets. Okay. Say, Sanju Bhai has a Chittis Corner. Corner, new venture. Okay, they, he doesn't go and set up a units or the outlets over there. But some of them who is interested, say you are interested in your Jaipur. Jaipur. And Jaipur we have one. So, one. so, you will ask, give me a franchisee. 
you will set up a outlet over there of Chitti's corner. Then now he charges franchise fee for and also supply whatever they know how etc. Whether he is required to take a registration in Jaipur, I mean Rajasthan. We are talking purely on the franchisor's point of view. You will take in your registration, that is a different thing. He has to take a registration in those respective states wherever the franchise is run out. That's Franchise rights are merely licenses, the right to use a particular brand name. So these being rights intangible, I can provide these services from wherever I am already. I do not need to be physically present in that state to provide this service. Uh, you are required to register only when you are providing the supply from that particular state. So in this case, uh, it, it need not be that I am uh, providing a supply from that particular state, nor can it be said that I have a fixed place of business in that state. And uh, therefore, I do not think a franchisor needs to register in each state. Uh, what if the franchisee is making sales through the uh, swiggies and all that stuff? In that case, also the franchisor need not register? No, the answer is uh, completed. You will get a mask. There is an extra... <laughs> <laughs> I just want a free consultancy. Okay. No, I'm asking about the franchiser. Franchiser is registered under Swiggy's and his franchisee is also basically supplying through those websites or that. So should the franchiser then register or not register? In this case, the supply is still continued to be run by the franchisee. So franchiser has gone. I just thought I'd take a free consultancy. For his GTS card. Okay. Yeah. Answer is done. And uh, again, 220 marks. Okay. And uh, before that, we just have an introduction here. Then we go back to team A. Hello, everyone. I am Abhiram Dixit. I am from Kolhapur, Maharashtra. Uh, I am a... Uh, I'm a first... Uh, I'm a member of first faculty identification program of indirect access. And I also worked in the area of UE VAT. Uh, and apart from that, I have my firm in Kolhapur. I recently started working in the area of indirect access. I was not working in the area of VAT. I had few clients in uh, service tax, uh, but recently started with GST. So that's all about me. Thank you. Thank you. And Kolhapur is a place where you got the famous Mahalakshmi temple. So if anybody wants to make good money, Go to his house, stay there, go to the temple, do darshan, and you'll become rich. Next, be made. The terms nil rated goods as a pair as the case may be, and exempted supplies can be interchangeably used. 
how it cannot, cannot be interchangeable. Nil rented means the government intention is very clear, they don't want to charge their commodity or goods or services. For exempted, they are by way of exemption notification and notification can be withdrawn at any point of time and these both cannot be changed interchangeably. Uh, uh, I think answer is correct and we will get the full 20 marks. Uh, I want to explain certain concepts here. In the taxation matters, generally there is a levy, then assessment, then collection. Generally when we say it is a nil rate, it's a part of a levy. Nil is interchangeably used in certain old law, but now presently the rate in the GST law, it says the rate as may be notified on recommendation of the GST Council. So that is a rate notification that 1 bar 2017 is a rate notification. Whereas 2 of 2017 is an exemption notification. So the rate notification uses the word nil. So the nil rated, if there anything is coming out to be uh, nil, it is nil rated. If you see actually there is no nil rated there. Though in the law they do mention about it, it there is no actually nil rated over there. And I don't know how many of you have actually seen the opening paragraph of these two notifications, notification number 1 and notification number 2. How many of you have observed and have found any difference between the same? We have seen only table. Yes, Maybe both of them are issued under different sections. One is issued under Notification number 1 is issued under 9-1, which is a charging section, whereas 2 is issued under notification number... No, section. Sorry, not, notification 2 is issued under section 11 of CST. Now, contrary, if you go to notification number 11 of 2017, which deals with the services, if you see the opening paragraph again, you find there is a combination of many sections over there. 9-1, 11-1, 16 as well as 17. What is 16 and 17? So if you see the restrictions and all those things, the power to restrict it is originating in Sunmat credit, sorry, the section 16 is used in the rate notification to confine your credits. So that is the intermix which they have done in that notification. Generally we directly go into the table and try to see the rates of tax. But it is important for us to also see the powers under which that particular notification is issued to distinguish that whether it is exemption, which prevails over what, it will be very very useful. In light of that, the of decision which says that because the notification is a conditional and it is a binding because of section 17 as condition as well as safeguard as may be prescribed. So, will you buy that argument or do you have a say? Okay. I think uh, last answer. Like a, uh, I'll just put it across that Cafe Coffee Day went for the advance footing only for one reason and that was because under the VAT law they got a favourable decision to say that we can go at 18% rate of tax, the general rate of taxes. And they were very confident the same ruling would come in the Karnataka GST law also, the CBS GST also. So basically they went for that approach. The balance of answers will be given by Rajesh and now we go to the next question uh, that is the, we'll have the general round. How many of you have moved around the property here? This property, Golden Palace. Didn't give a time to move around. Wow. Now let's virtually move around. Okay. Uh, in the building in which you all are sitting now, there is a billiards table. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Is that? See, people have seen around. Hari bolte nahi dekhe yaar. Okay. So there is a billiards table. So the first question would be to Team C. Your marks would be how much? 10, 20, Rajesh. General. Yeah. Hey, our questions are here now. <laughs> okay, we can make it 50 or <laughs> huh? No, we make it around say 25. Okay, it's a general round. Uh, it's a very simple question. So, the question would be on billiards. And your question would be that who was the first Indian to win the world amateur billiards title? We are giving you four options. Don't worry. 
ओके वन मिस्टर गीत सेठी सेकेंड विल्सन जोन्स थर्ड माइकल फेरारे फेरीरा एंड फोर्थ मनोज कोठारी यू वॉन्ट मी टू रिपीट द क्वेश्चन अगेन हु वॉज द फर्स्ट इंडियन टू विन द वर्ल्ड एमेच्योर बिलियर्स टाइटल गीत सेठी विल्सन जोन्स माइकल फेरारे और मनोज कोठारी कॉन्फिडेंट आई कांट इवन पास ऑन द क्वेश्चन योर श्योर गीत सेठी विज विज माइकल फेरारे हु वॉज ओल्डर गीत सेठी सो अरविंद श्योर आर यू कॉन्फिडेंट ऑन ए पार्टनर श्योर बिलियंस यू हैव डिफरेंट कलर्स ऑफ वॉल्स राइट वाइट रेड एंड ऑल द and which is a ball you used to hit it the white ball you can't hit the black ball right you hit the black ball <laughs> okay the answer is wilson jones he was much much before that he's an indian okay and if i am not wrong michael ferrare was much senior to pete city kothari i have not heard of him this was again answer supplied so i said now whatever i say is final <laughs> okay so you miss on the 25 points here uh, we go on to team d have you seen the national flag right you have seen it okay you remember the colors the official colors orange and navy like that wo dhyan dena so then i'll not ask you that question okay the question is if you have seen the national flag and wherever we go we see the national flag we stand up whenever the national anthem is raised across a simple question to you the ratio of width of the national flag to its length the width of the national flag to the length of the national flag is 3 is to 5 2 is to 3 2 is to 4 3 is to 4 <coughs> the width to the length of the indian national flag you have got four option 3 is to 5 2 is to 3 2 is to 4 and 3 is to 4 ministry of steel is ready to answer it we'll come to you sir ab desh bhakti thodi to aani chahiye wo baat alag hai ki i am seeing the answer to find out what exactly it is
You said three. So he went by the option A. Three is to five. Gandhi ji ko to puchna mana hai Desh Bhakti ke baare mein. Aapko bhi puchna mana hai. You are from the ministry, so you know it. Okay. Anybody else would like to answer? Yes, sir. Three is to five, sir. That's what they said. Three colors are there. Okay. Length is the five. So three colors are there. One, one. Equal, equal. Okay. And length is five. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, yeah, your answer. You have not taken from him, right? Yes, I have taken. No. I understand. Is they are talking about the ratio between the width to the length. So what he is telling is, each color is one one size, and into five is the the five is the thing. So three is to five is the ratio. So uh, anybody else? Participants, how do you chocolate with Sakta? Yeah. Huh? Two is the height. Height is two. And width is three. Option is not there. Width and length are both the height. Yes, sir. Width is three. 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 एक बार देशभक्ति वापस ला देंगे, please. Okay, now, correct, correct. Okay, anybody else? Width is three and the length, sorry, height is two and the width is three. So two is to three. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. How many of you believe they are right? Wow, two, three. हमारे देशभक्तों ने बोल रहे हैं कुछ भी. गांधी साहब, answer. Two is to three हो गया, three is to five हो गया, अभी आपका क्या आंसर है? हाँ? Two is to four. Two is to four. अब गांधी पे भी भरोसा नहीं रहा। Yes sir. Two is to three. I think you have to give a big round of applause for all your answers here. I just wanted to try to get here. He got two questions to ask, I got just one question to ask, sir. Okay, so the answer of yours was wrong. It is two is to three. Now you had reached that answer. You were deliberating between the two. So anyway, a good try. But uh, with this, I. It is simple answer. But anyhow, why they complicated that? I don't know. The two is to three simple question. That is from the beginning. You know that is two is to three. Sir, you will come every year, you will come every year, you will come every year, we will not do it every year. We will not do it every year. We will salute and be happy. Next question is to team, they get zero points. The next question is to team A. Mike can be going there, Rajesh Bhai. Do you watch the Olympic Games? No sir. Very good. What about you Anushri? Sometimes. Do you know there is a game called hockey? Yes. And uh, you know there is a player called Dhyanchan? Yes. The question is not on him. <laughs> okay. The question is, when did India win its first Olympic hockey gold in which year? The options are 1928, 1932, 1936 and I will change the answer here to 1940. India never played Olympic under flag of India till the 1947. They played under the British crown. No. Before uh, independence. 1940, may, if you remember well, but Adolf Hitler was a great fan of the Right, sir. Did, before they the played World under World. the crownship of uh, Lord. Under the crownship of British in the in the name of right. India. Yeah. In the name of India. Okay, your question now is pre-independence. Okay. <laughs> okay. Actually, I did a blunder. The fourth option was there something else. Okay. 
ध्यान चंद को बुला लो वन ऑफ द ग्रेटेस्ट प्लेयर्स इन हॉकी And if I'm not wrong, that was the first gold medal we ever won in hockey uh, in the Olympics, right? Yes. Jabri, so yes, Malay, 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 I think you are taking too much time. We can't wait for another session. 36, sir. 36. My God. My God. 36. 1936 or 2036? 1936. 1936. 1936. We will definitely win, sir. We will definitely win the World Cup. Okay. Uh, anybody else would like to answer from the audience? Yes, yes, sir. Sir, you did Google. <laughs> Google, what are you doing? Sir, yes, sir. More keen to answer. Uh, I, no, you are getting lots of opportunities. Sir, I will give you a second. Anybody else would like to answer who's not Google? It was 1928. Google kya na? 1928. Option nahi tha? Olympics. Option nahi tha? The first option. The first option tha na sir, apne diya tha. Tha. Yaar hai? Yeah, it is 1928. The answer is correct. Thank you very much. A big round of applause to him for Google. And please don't Google it because we are just trying to please ourselves. <laughs> now, going to team B, very tough question. You will have to go for a blind up. The currency convertibility concept in its original form originated in Wells Agreement, Britain's Wood Agreement, Taylor's Agreement, none of the above. Which one, sir? We have gone with P or C. We have not. 
<laughs> you must finalize as big as you are. And what if it is not B and C? You will take minus 25. If I say A, you are willing for minus 25, then I will give you an option no, no, of B and C, then you will take the answer. Agree? No, we are not agree. No gambling. Okay, the right answer was B. <laughs> well, I had to just spell it out because you went by the concept of written the country. So I wanted to confuse you and just check it out. But it was a good effort made by you. A round of applause for them. Unfortunately, you don't get the answers for it. And uh, this round ends here. Right? And uh, can we have? Huh? Nobody got points. <coughs> So the general knowledge of chartered accountants. Is he liye to kete KBC me hamara koi kam nahi. But jo KBC pe jeetta hai, wo hamare paas aata hai. Okay, now we go to the next round. And before that, Pooja, can you just tell us the scores, please? Yes, sir. Our team A. Team A will stand a good round of applause for them. Second round, we have answered. Is rated and exempt rated, madam? Yeah, answer right. Yeah, then answer right. She is exempted, that's pretty much. Exempted. 30, 30, 20, 30. Wow. It's a close tie, no? It's uh, 3 are at 30, and team C is at 20. It's not a very far distance across. I thought this round of 25 marks would have helped you across. In fact, the UK average is 40 marks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought this round of 25 marks would have helped you across. In fact, the, you got the easiest of questions, actually. Answers were tough. Answers were tough. No, Rajesh. That's the usual practice of ICS. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, what we will do? Okay, you go. Uh, this round is a much more detailing with the facts coupled with the question. Uh, it is facts coupled with the question. Uh, you are coming back to the practice? Yes. Okay. So we have team D now which is going to answer this. What would be the points? Here the points are going to be 30 marks. It's going to be 30. Oh. Wow. And minus 15 if wrong. wrong. Minus 15 if it is wrong. wrong. Are you all okay? <laughs> okay fine. We'll do that. 30 for a right answer. Minus 15 for a wrong answer. Reasoning has to be given, Rajesh? Yes, with full reasoning. And if the answer is right and reasoning is not there, will you say no minus? minus. Either full or no. No in between. Achha, either plus or minus, no zero. No zero. Okay. The question starts now for team D. 30 points. 30 and minus 15. Yeah. <coughs> Husband owns a land. Wife takes a loan and constructs a part in that particular land, a commercial building and a residential building on that particular land where she is going to get rental from commercial 12 lakhs, rental from residential 7.9 lakhs, whether she is required, to, she doesn't have any other income, whether she is required to take a registration. Under the GST law. You could note on the question. Husband owns the land, wife takes loan, constructs part as commercial and residential. Rental from the commercials is 12 lakhs per annum. Residential is 7.9 lakhs per annum. Total rental received is 19.9 lakhs per annum. Now, is she required to register, go for a registration? Please understand two things. Husband owns the land, wife takes the loan, wife constructs it. She gets 19.9 lakhs as rentals, which is bifurcated into 12 and 7.9. Answer is true or false, whether she is required to take registration, yes or no. And whatever your answer is, why? to husband or wife for dena hi
The question is here to all of you, all the food. You can also apply the clubbing provisions of Econ Factor. This is not just transfer of property without the consideration. You have to find him to answer. You never know. I may give lots of answers, but if you go by your Nanadi, you will become a Vikari. and uh, indirect tax experts in Bangalore and they said why don't you come 
and I said I can spend three days uh, with uh, them. It's a golden opportunity and, and golden palms. It's a very lovely property where I took morning walk. And my another interesting uh, thing in life is environment. I have worked since past 20 years uh, with a lot of environmental projects. One is Navadarshanam. Uh, one is Navadarshanam, which has 100 acres campus, which is completely uh, adjacent to Thali Forest, where uh, a complete eco-restoration program happened since last 25 years. A barren land was left just fenced with solar fencing. The complete forest came back and in the due course, uh, the forest became so dense, the, all the animals and uh, like uh, you name it, cheetah, bear or elephant, everything started coming and uh, residing in that uh, uh, campus and very limited uh, access is there. People are not allowed to take uh, uh, too much, like, like how we can walk here around. It's a jungle. And inspired by that project, I started another, promoted one more project 20 kilometers away, which is called Anandavanam. That is again close to 100 acres. Mr. Arvind also is part of it. And many friends, about 35 families came together and invested money in that project. And of course that is little bit different from Navadrashanam because people wanted to build their country homes and things live in harmony with nature. And they have been uh, planting a lot of trees and uh, building eco-friendly houses there. And this is my journey. Based on this, I started uh, 10 years back. Uh, I was very passionate about foods. What we eat, that's what Sanjay Ji was telling. Uh, the brain can manipulate taxes. Food can manipulate body and mind. So this is what I understood from long back. And in that uh, direction, uh, I promoted one shop. It's called Nisarga Shop, which deals with uh, various food products grown organically, sourced directly from farmers, and many NGOs and uh, uh, very small self-help groups throughout India. I have travelled uh, to Himalayas, to uh, Rajasthan, Pune, everywhere, wherever there were organic farmers and entrepreneurs. Small, I met them and. Uh, uh, source most products from them. We have a lot of type with uh, Timbuktu in Andhra Pradesh. Most of uh, somebody in Anandpur near there must be knowing. So various NGOs and the store has become one of the top, uh, maybe second or third in Bangalore. And uh, my wife takes care of the shop. Uh, this is about uh, my profession and passion. Thank you. So friends, if you see the whole mix we have, we have got people from the corporate world, we have got people who have a passion towards serving the society, you have got people who are interested in protecting their ecology. And one question now, we talked about nature and all, it's a general question for all to answer. Let me see who can answer this. How many of you have heard about Lord Hanuman? Everyone. How many of you have read about him? How many believe you know him? Which state and place Lord Hanuman was born officially? Karnataka. is there. Near Yeah, so it is Karnataka. A big round of applause to him. So why I said that we are in Karnataka and Lord Hanuman is in Karnataka? Huh? Yeah, I understand minus 10. <laughs> because you gave the wrong answer. Kishkinda was the place. But near Hampi, right? Was spent? Partly right. Partly right. Partly. Part of Kopal district actually. Okay, now we go for your real marks. Rajesh. Yeah. Again, it's a very good fact-based problem. A developer completes his project of constructing residential buildings and get a occupancy certificate for a project on the project on 15th of March 2018. He enters into agreement to sell a completed flat after that for two crores rupees. 
and receives advance of 1.5 crore within March. That is specific about the date of March. Post 15th. Post 15th before 31st, say 20th of March. The installment for the year 17-18 where agreements were entered before OC was 1.5 crores. 1.5 crores post completion, 1.5 crores throughout the year for agreement to sell before OC. Okay. He has got the total input tax credit of 10 lakh for the year. How much credit gets this alone? in terms of rule 42. Here one specific note I would like to say. We assume that there is no requirement of reversal of a credit for the unsold flats. Okay. We are only going with 42. How much credit gets this alone? Shall I sir clarify the facts one more? Yes, yes, please. Uh, you can add also. <laughs> The assumed project completed on 15th March 2018. Yes. Advance received on 20th March 2018. For the completed flat. For the completed flat, 1.5 crore. And there are no other activities. Right? Another 1.5 crore. Another 1.5 crore for the pre-OC. Pre agreements entered okay. prior to OC. Okay. 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 So that is again 1.5 crore. Okay. Okay. Yes. And for the year 17, 18? 10 lakh is the input tax credit. That's the fact. That's it. What is the figure 2 crore? 2 crore is the agreement entered. But 1.5 crore is the amount received. Okay. 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 आप दोनों आगे आ जाइए आंसर के बाद आपका इंट्रोडक्शन होगा ठीक है Consideration for the earlier flight which I sold. 
1.5 are received after completion of the client and I have a total credit of a 10 client. So I will do a 50-50 uh, credit. Uh, you took the advice from me actually, you know? <laughs> uh, sir, but if it is wrong, then marks will be deducted from your account. <laughs> 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 you remember, this is a point game where you have a negative 15 marks in those. Are you ready? Yes. Or do you want to pass on? Okay, uh, you can just tell the reasoning. Okay. Uh, reasoning uh, being is that uh, I have received the consideration for the year plan, which is a taxable activity. So I am eligible to take a credit of that part of it. With respect to this uh, after OC, it will be treated as an exam supply and hence the reversal will be required. Okay. Uh, the answer is not correct. So you get minus 15. Will I minus <laughs> Okay, now, uh, anybody else other than Sanjay Bhai? Sanjay Bhai, I also want to answer. No. No, no, let the others. No, not the teams here. Anybody else? Sanjay Bhai? You want to you want answer? Before giving Sanjay Bhai answer, I want to ask him. No, actually, I am not right with the teams. No, none of us are. Uh, I think uh, the input should be taken on the basis of the total uh, turnover, which is 2 crores actually. No, total 2 crores. Okay. Yes. He is saying 2 crores should be reversed and 1.5 crores. So the ratio should have been 2 by 3.5. Yes. 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 That is what the that oh, is. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. That should have been your answer. Yes. Right? What, Sanjay sir? Any different? There. I, just, I just wanted to know that that 1.5 crore I received, but what was the value of the taxable supply? No, that particular thing. Uh, uh, Sanjay, all you have to do is to take the value of the taxable supply. Yes, sir. Okay. 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 Cost of the plot. Advance is 1.5. Okay. What is the cost of the plot? Two, two, two. The first one was two. The second one. The no. second one was two. question was actually that one third deduction of a land is there or not. That's exactly what you're asking. No, no, no. Asking what is the cost, what is the value of those flats which are booked prior to the post? Value of the post. The first, Va first value of the thing is much higher, but what I have received for the flats is 1.5. Go by the valuation with you. Okay. You will go the valuation by I will take that value. Essentially, the question is the about what, how much credit gets this allowed? Common credit is only. It's all credit, you but also out of 10 lakh like quantification. You also said about 42, right? Sorry, 42. Rule 42. Rule 42. He specifically said apply rule 42. No reversal. But after minus reverse, nahi hoga. <laughs> okay. I think why you want to say no reverses? Because uh, at the time of availment, I should see the eligibility criteria. At the time of availment of input tax credit, it was always intention to use in the further course of furtherance of business. Hence, I am entirely eligible for a credit. 42, you will do an annual computation, recomputation. Sir, so the tax period will be after 15 no. months, it will be attached. It is March 2008. Right, sir. 2019. Right. So with the same financial year, we are going so to take the tax. The word is either not financial; it's the tax period. Sorry. Exempted period is the tax period. No, uh, no my question was, or my thing at, uh, is, when you do month on month basis, then again you do a reversal, total recomputation at year end. At that time, you take a five full financial year, irrespective of whether it was taxable, exempted, or there is no segregation. Answer though is nil. But the reasoning is not correct. Okay? So, I wanted to bring out certain point through this particular question. Generally, we apply time of supply. Right? What is the time of supply? When we receive an advance or the time of supply. That is only in respect of taxable supplies. For a third schedule item, there is no time of supply. There is no concept of advance will not be taxable, I mean, will not be recorded. There they use the word sale, actual sale. 
third schedule uses the word actual sale even this 17 section 17 to provision also talks about actual sale here the sale has not occurred so there is no exempt supply in this particular financial year so rajesh i think we should appreciate the answer given by him though he answered it in the second attempt so we will reverse the non clapping for them and we can clap hands for them now. Thank you. Uh, Puja, minus 15, team A. <laughs> we only reverse the non-clapping, huh? the but points in minus 15 will be there. Now, team B, are you ready? Please understand that this has a negative marking. So, please be clear that when you have a negative marking, you skip, you could be better, otherwise you could be following team C. So, keeping is a huh? You can't skip that. Please give that. You can't skip that. No, no, we have to No, no, sir. We have to No, no, sir. We have to No, sir. We have to skip. 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 Okay, the next question to team B. Pooja Limited started manufacturing of only exempted goods. It purchased capital goods of 1 crore rupees and paid IGST of 18 lakhs. In addition, it paid input tax of 12 lakhs in that particular period. It exported all the goods manufactured in that year. It can claim refund of entire 30 lakhs. Is this statement true or false? Started new business, purchased capital goods of 1 crore, paid tax on it 18 lakhs. In addition to the other input taxes which it was paid was 12 lakhs, the total is 30 lakhs. It exported all its manufactured goods in that particular year. The 30 lakh total input tax they can claim refund. True or false? Why? <laughs> All easy answers goes to others, na? <laughs> Even when I don't know ideas. <laughs> huh? <laughs> <laughs> Our first question was not have answer to the question. <laughs> Technical round is the last round. After there is a general round. Mook lagi na. Uske baad we'll have a gambler's round. This is a gambler's round. Three rounds. Three rounds. Yes, third round. Third round. Third round. He wants to gamble. The entire 30 lakhs is not the correct answer, sir. They can claim the uh, input tax on the 12 lakhs only, sir. Because um, the exports, that is fine. Uh, there are two routes, no, sir. I mean, if I pay the tax on the exports, then I have the option of play, setting up the input tax on the capital goods also. In this, as they are already exempted, I cannot have the option to pay the tax. So, I have the only option to claim the input tax on the uh, inputs, not on the capital goods. So, 12 lakhs is the only input tax credit I can. Uh, the answer is correct. Uh, here, the important point to be noted is for eligibility of an input tax, even though exempted goods are getting exported, it can be taken as an input tax credit for both capital goods as well as inputs. But for claim of refund on the exports, there we only find place of only inputs, input services, not capital goods. So thereby, the whatever the tax paid on the capital goods gets accumulated, cannot get refund for only a person who is supplying exempted supplies, even though he is exporting. So 30 to them, team B, 
going ahead of all of them and now we have the introduction round ma'am hi good evening everyone i am kunjan mittal from jaipur and except for being practicing um i listen music i love to swim and go to new places and this is the reason i've come here <laughs> so yeah, thank you jolly Hi all. My name is Siddharth Javadi, and uh, yeah, apart from being a chartered accountant, uh, been practicing in CST from past five years only. Uh, well, my hobbies are trekking and uh, bike riding. And going back home in the night. Yeah, bike. <laughs> bye bike. No bike. घर जाते हो बड़ी बात है. यहाँ तो वही पहुँचे जाते हैं. घर ही जाता हूँ. ठीक है. I think uh, we have uh, got the next team C here, and uh, Arvind again repeated plus 30 or minus 15 only. Sanjay LLP started online food supply services. That's it. Huh? That's it. 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 That's it.
I am the fourth generation into this profession. So to take care of the, my grandfather's practice, I have been forced to go into the GST. Uh, apart from regular practice, we have 600 GST files and 110 audit files and go on. <laughs> they, are, they, are just, they are just continuing. So apart from this, I also run an NGO which is called Responsible Citizen. Uh, it collects the excess food from the uh, events and it distributes to the needful 24-7, which we are doing from seven years uh, by using a Facebook page. We don't promote in the general public, but only we promote, uh, only the shared persons will be voluntary call, voluntarily calling us. So I just want to create an awareness that it should not be given. So I, I will not drive the persons to give their food. So I generally do not uh, say, promote the things. But uh, I am doing well and uh, every week we will be doing, uh, approximately feeding uh, 1,500 members every week. So we will be doing three projects, three to four projects every week. So we are doing it for seven years. Thank you, Anita. Another person motivated towards charitable services. Really appreciable. And uh, now we have team D, 30 of minus 15. Started with them? No. Yes, sir. Started with you? Okay, so with this, Pooja, can you just tell us around points? Yeah, the mic is yours. Okay, the right answer is what Mr. Sridhar said, 
दादा भाई नरोजी ट्यूटर फर्स्ट तो फिफ्टी टाइम्स कैब्स हो बहुत अवतर थैंक यू थैंक यू नाउ दिस इज अजी आंसर बेटर बी फास्ट विथ दी ऑप्शन यू आर गोन विजिट आउट फिफ्टी ट्वेंटी फाइव माइनस हंड्रेड माइनस फिफ्टी गिल्ड एज मार्केट मीन्स Bullion market, market of government securities, market of guns, yes. market of pure metals. Yes, yeah. You didn't say yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Y
नहीं नहीं एक राउंड बोर्ड में नहीं तो ना ओके फास्टेस्ट वाइस फास्ट ओके द क्वेश्चन इस द हेडक्वार्टर्स ऑफ यूनेस्को द हेडक्वार्टर्स ऑफ यूनेस्को इस एंड रोम जिनीवा न्यूयॉर्क पेरिस no, it came from here, I think. Okay. Yes. Okay. C or D? C. C. One second. Don't answer. You have a multiplication factor. Okay. So, do you want to go for single, double, or you want to play more? They have already answered. Okay. Already answered. What was the answer? The headquarters of UNESCO is at Rome, Geneva, New York, Paris. Answer told locked at 1525 only because you answered before going for the option. You could have doubled it if you wanted, and if you would have doubled it, you would have been double negative. It's a wrong answer. Isle wo to mat bolo, girao inko to minus. 25. Again, I am repeating the question. It will be 80, uh, 40, 20 minus 80 minus 40. Simple question. The headquarters of UNESCO is at Rome, Geneva, New York, Paris. You could still say Geneva and get minus 20. <laughs> you wanted to. Yeah, you also said yes. You were fighting for it. Oh no. Huh? Yes. Single double. 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 Man, double. 80. 80 minus 40. Minus 40 or plus 80. You come super top or you go full top. Double single. Teen me to ek bol na hai yaar. Isme kya sochte ho? Kuch bhi karo. Jite ke hum. Kya confidence hai? Sabko negative me lagke jite ke hum job nahi denge. Kya jawab? Double? 80 plus or minus 40? I repeat the question for you. The headquarters of UNESCO is at Rome, Geneva, New York, Paris. Geneva was excluded. Balance 3 are there. Answer you said is B, C, New York. And you jog downwards. It's minus 40. Minus 40 to team D. Gosh. Okay. Okay, now I'll give you a different offer. Okay. If anybody answers in these four teams, again you have the option to answer. If you answer correct, you get plus 10. If you answer wrong, you get minus 20. Because you have got only two answers to answer. Right? So, anybody would like to answer? Nice team should get off. Answer Bolo. Like was the Paris Convention in 1928. Yes, I have written Paris. Right answer. Thank you. Okay, so this has been a wonderful round. I think four questions are over, and uh, this has changed the whole horoscope of all the teams here. And uh, Pooja, Rajesh, give it, give it. Rajesh would announce the scores. Okay, team D, right? team D, team D leading with seventy. Given after minus forty. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Team A standing second with 55. Oh. Team C, the third standing with 25. And Team B with 10. So, do we, we have the introductions left. Quite a few introductions down in my introduction is pending, most important. Okay, who else is pending here? Introduction? Come on. All of you can come one by one. Sanjay Bhai. Yeah, that's what we'll do. That's what we'll have to do. We'll have to give you a whole list. Okay, yeah. One by one, we can come, introduce ourselves, tell us, passions.
Good evening, friends. I am Gadam Sitt Gopal Rao from Prudhudur, Andhra Pradesh. I started my career in practicing 1980. I am blessed with two sons, one daughter. And one son is a chartered accountant. He is with me. He is doing a GST practice also. I started GST reading day before yesterday. Even for yesterday or there in office at 6.30 in the morning. Sunny is a software engineer working in Abu Dhabi and daughter is given a bank door. He is a software engineer. Now he resigned software engineering job. I think 2 lakhs per month he started a real estate. I am happy to travel and make a friendship throughout the world. And I interested to I travel Kashmir to Kanyakumari and to, uh, Gujarat to Assam. I, um, I lost my missus in memory of her. I am given a five lakhs to old age pension and disabled persons. <laughs> apart apart from this, I am very helpful to all old age men and people, poor people also. And uh, I am like to go traveling like that. And uh, I visited, I stayed one month in Abu Dhabi. They respected chartered accountants. When I give my visiting card, they yeah, asked tell them, they wanted you are a chartered accountant like that. There is a great scope in UAE. They, do, they introduce a bag. They introduce a bag for us. There is very, very, very scope there. Anybody can go there. They enjoy it. And uh, there is a, one thing about uh, TDD, Tirupati Devasan. For 65 years, aged people who can darshan within the one hour. Within one hour, 65, 68, more than 65. Uh, yeah. Physically handicapped, the regional bar for years. For 65 years more, we can have a wife also along with, we can take it. That is regarding. I will get donated 2 lakhs to Lord Venkateswara. Further, I want to donate 1 lakh to also. I am taking a blessing of Lord Venkateswara. Thank you very much. I am very happy to join here. Thank you, sir. Bye. Uh, thank you. See, uh, this is what we chartered accountants are. Wherever we go, we have our respect. Except Modi doesn't believe in us. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, he's written a letter to the institute that in GST you are charging unreasonably. Why are you charging so much? In the institute's program on 1st July, he comes and shouts at us. So he doesn't believe in us. Just, I think we do de get deserve a better place. Most of us chartered accountants are doing wonderful jobs in the service to the society. Unfortunately, we are doing it in splits. We are not using our institute banner. We are not institute uh, institute ground. We are doing it through various organizations. I think it's time that we chartered accountants highlight what we are capable of doing. Work under one banner and we could do wonders for the service of the society. Sanjeev. Good evening. Uh, myself is Sanjay Burad from Nasik. Basically, uh, initially I was interested in engineering, but destiny brought me in chartered accountancy. But I am very happy. Uh, what has happened? For good. <laughs> A reason I will not tell. <laughs> Other things I love now in the religious things. Uh, religious things. And our religious told that whatever you donate, don't mention anyone. It will be have a good effect. So always do that, whatever you religiously do. Generously, whatever you donate, you don't tell your left hand also. That is a principle. If you follow, it will increase. It will increase. Uh, if you want to uh, declare, I am not there to bar you. That's one thing. Second thing, I am interested in, I love in indirect access. That is also when I have started my practice. It is service tax for there. And I thought okay, we should know the law when I have started practice, but it has converted it's my main practice itself hobby. That's it. Thank you. Uh, 
Sanjay Bhai is spiritually very inclined. Every 15 days, once he does a fasting for 30 hours without even water. Every month, two times. Uh, also follows the Zen philosophy very seriously. And uh, that's one good quality which I would say, which all of us should do following our religions and practices, which basically would help us to get more stronger and the happiness index would increase more. Next, members who have not introduced themselves, please. One by one, a little faster. Hello everyone, I am Vinay Jhumar uh, from Kolapur. Uh, place near Kolapur, Ichal Karanji. Uh, basically, business, but due to GST and CA Sanjesh Munra from Ahmedabad, uh, I am back in practice. Uh, I look after my family business, we are in textile business. Again, I, along with my hostel friends, I have done my CA from Mumbai. Around 10 of us, we have started a group known as Swaraj. Uh, we help the cancer patients financially. And as of today, 45 patients we have helped. Uh, majorly through Dr. Suresh Arwani at Jaslo Hospital. He has his trust. Uh, we donate our amounts over there. And a place near to Kolapur, Shirol, where maximum number of cancer patients are there. Uh, Use uh, of pesticides. Shirol is a place in Asia. Maximum, um, what we call it, tomatoes uh, are grown over there. Asia highest production of tomatoes are there. Highest pesticides. Highest pesticides and maximum. Uh, every second or third house there is cancer patient. So we have started an awareness program over there. We all of our friends and financially also who are not able to do, we are helping them. Is it not really inspiring when you come to know the other side of the Chartered Accountants? Each one of us is doing a wonderful job to the society. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Jagdish, uh, coming from Chennai. Uh, so, job of myself, I'm uh, uh, everyone can do. Uh, Laura, please. Yeah. Keep the mic a little closer. Sure. sure. Don't kiss it. <laughs> Uh, see, I was in KPMG for 10 years and uh, GST is actually due to me when I started practicing. Okay, so two reasons why I quit uh, the firm was, so I spent 10 years, okay, basically. Yeah, yeah. So, so I quit for two reasons. One, uh, so I, was, I always had the passion to practice. And then the second one, I want to do something uh, for the agriculture as a industry. Okay. So, so what I feel so far is uh, that is the most uh, 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 see what I would say, the, the helpless industry in India is agriculture, basically. So they were not uh, funded. Uh, it's not an industry at all. So I thought I would start a marketplace for them, uh, providing them good profit or something. So that was my intention. Slowly, over a bit of time, I will have a marketplace for, for this. Uh, thank you, Jagdish. A wonderful uh, Thank you. Uh, from the big four to the individual practices and definitely growing better than all. And I think we met in one of the classes in uh, Chennai, right? Yeah. And anybody else left out now for the introduction other than Pooja, me and uh, Rajesh? No? So Pooja, please introduce yourself. Uh, a big round of applause for Pooja. She's done a wonderful job coordinating this whole session, coordinating with the speakers, working, getting the materials, listening a lot to me, my shoutings particularly. Pooja. Now introduce yourself, introduce me, then introduce Rajesh also, or Rajesh will introduce himself. Uh, I, I'll just uh, introduce sir first. No, yourself first. We'll go to order, then Rajesh then. Rajesh will introduce himself, I'll talk about myself, you we'll talk about yourself. Uh, okay, I, I qualified as a chartered accountant in 2011. Uh, accidentally happened to meet uh, Sanjay sir uh, in the late 2016 and uh, he gave me this opportunity to come to Bangalore. So it's just uh, a little more than a year and a half journey in indirect taxes under his mentorship. Uh, before that I have never practiced or there is no other indirect tax background that I have. So whatever you see me is what he has created out of me. Uh, I believe I am such a... So I am grateful to him for uh, identifying me and getting me this far. Getting mentored by him I think is 
a blessing that I have and I want to express my gratitude to him for that. Apart from being a chartered accountant, I'm a yoga enthusiast. Um, I Tomorrow morning session you can say, <laughs> <laughs> I'm into, uh, into Iyengar Yoga. I do a little bit of uh, handwriting analysis, that's graphology. Um, doing my research on graphotherapy, how do you heal ailments through handwriting, uh, I mean change in handwriting and that becomes the treatment. So I'm doing my research in that. Uh, I I also believe in uh, alternate healing remedies, uh, that is healing with energies. So I have been doing all of this for quite some time now. So these are my interests apart from uh, being a chartered accountant. For now, uh, working on another uh, book about Sir, which he himself, I would like him to tell. And we would like to take certain inputs from you as well before, you leave, before we uh, leave this place tomorrow. That's about me. Thank you. Uh, Pooja didn't say another aspect about her. She's also authored a book on the uh, goods and service taxes and the eighth edition of it has already come out. Thank you, Pooja. And she's done a wonderful job. Uh, Rajesh Bhai. Myself, Rajesh. Full name is Rajesh Kumar Tumkur Rajana. That is TR in Shirt stands for. Tumkur is from here, maybe another 50 kilometers. But you reach Tumkur faster than Bangalore. If I start here, I will go to my hometown faster than I go home. So that is the uh, thing. Uh, I did my article ship, studies, everything in Tumkur. Then I was looking for to come out of direct tax and do something in direct tax, I joined Madhukar in 2000. So, started my journey in indirect tax practices since then and uh, grown from there till whatever I am here in this particular subject. When it comes to interest, my interest, everything lies with this particular subject. Anything new, research, or into that, any nuances, any nitty gritties. So, trying to find out those things. And also, especially, it comes to a litigation. Trying to find uh, new arguments, defend the possible cases of the clients. And in addition to this, I have authored along with Madhukar sir, a uh, couple of books and also with Sanjay sir and his team have assisted in authoring that books. In fact, we did a compilation and the, on the rate of tax, a detailed uh, uh, book with uh, Srikant, his partner. And uh, initially as my first work, I started on this book work under Raghuraman for the excise law and practice which was published by RKJ in a number of editions I was working for that uh, and my first starting point on this academic writing started with the institute study material uh, where the institute had asked Raghuraman sir to revise the study material in 2001, I had not even qualified at that time. My one group was completed, I was yet to do the, my one more group. At that time, he I was carrying that paper and said, I was looking at the institute, something is coming, so we were looking at it. So he said, what, and I said, what is that sir? He said, they are asking me to revise the study material. For us, being a student, it was, no, oh, so great, our institute material is getting revised. So he said, uh, you know, I am too busy, I don't think that we will be able to do it. And I was wondering, such a big opportunity, how can he say no? Because for us, as a students, then I was staring at him. He said, why do you want to do? This is a question which he asked. I said, yes. He just gave the paper and said, you do it. 
and that is how I started. And uh, I went back again to him, sir. Institute study material is not that so much good. I want to rewrite. I will not revise. He said, okay, do it. So in fact, in 2001, the old study material which was there was completely taken out, and I redrafted the entire study material. Uh, and that is where I, this academic uh, thing started for me. And from there, I've been going on with support of you know the professionals and Sanjay sir's support, Madhukar sir, Thakuraman, uh, B. N. Gurraj, K. S. Ravi Shankar, uh, Jatin. All of them are you know behind around us are supporting in all respect. And in fact, each of us discuss with each other any issue which comes in. So it's like you know one group uh, in a combined hand. So anytime anybody can take a call and call any one of these people and ask any question. So that uh, sort of a freedom is being given to all of us. So I think that is where we are all here. With this I, it's a, in fact, it's a good opportunity to share and hardly shared all these details with many of you. This is a place where I'm sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rajesh is a wonderful person, very helpful. Anytime you ask him any queries on the phone, personally, he's always there. And if he's near the offices also, he will say, Sanjay, why shall I come down and we can sit and talk. So that's the way for a favor he wants to do, he would come all the way and do it across. And plus being the quiz master here, a wonderful job done. And uh, they are also having an academy which they are into training and that's the dream of Madhukar sir post the concert also. And uh, they are into a lot of charitable things as Sanjay Bhai said, they don't speak about it much but they definitely are into a lot of things. And I am also a product of their office, I have also worked in their office. One point is they also do a CSR activity where the articles and they get a CA students also sponsorship, something like they have a concept. No, they do a lot of charity, that's what I said. But they don't the CSR concept was introduced to the CA program the first time. Yeah. It is not a case law, it is a case. There is a gold merchant in Hanun Auto. GST authorities inspected this shop. They found one kg excess gold than stock, stock in books, and they they went to bank, pass books. They found some entries are there, two lakhs, thirty lakhs like that. They two lakhs, thirty lakhs they return. Government this GST authority treated as it would our to say They demanded tax on it. Whether it is applicable or not. This shop, shop came to this mind, client on bill. Which section is applicable here? Can I pay tax or not? Confiscation is applicable. Penalty, any the projects are there? Please. Sir, so, the questions will take it one on one later if you have a doubt on this question. Yes, sir. We'll take it later because oh, we have not yet finished the quiz also. So, with due permission from you, sir, we'll take it up later or one-on-one -on -one would be a better option than taking cases because we also have to bring for lunch and dinner and people have been grilled from morning 9 o'clock onwards and... Uh, tomorrow is no problem, sir. No, no, fine, we'll take it up. If time permits, we'll definitely take up after the session, but let's not bring the momento here. Yeah? And uh, we, uh, before I go for my introduction, uh, would you like to have another round or quits? Quits. Another round, sir. Ah, they can't. Matlabi. Acha. Which? The winners have to say which or what? So, winner will be here. Ah. So, we are ready. <laughs> you no. Do you want to have another gambling round? No. Okay, we wind up here. So, with this, I would uh, conclude by introducing myself. And then, after that, if you have anything else, jokes, fun, we can have it for half an hour because we don't have anything else to do. Then, we have the dinner and then post dinner also. We can have a sort of networking. Just don't go into rooms and sleep. I would only suggest is that you are come here, network, meet people, talk. You never know what can happen well. This is a beautiful platform with less numbers being there. You know people, you understand yourself, you do an introspect of yourself. Who knows, you could be a changed person tomorrow. Okay. Myself, Sanjay Dhariwal, practicing in Bangalore. We have a firm called Dhariwal in Srinivas. We have around 140, 150 people working with us. 
and uh, we have around 27 network partners across India, network firms across India. We are said to be India's largest CA network firm. So this is a brief introduction. Uh, I started my practice in direct and indirect access, but I started as a speaker. As an article clerk, I have spoken in the field of indirect taxes, I have spoken on company law, I have spoken on profession tax, I have spoken on income tax, budget, stock markets. I started as a speaker in chartered accountancy fraternity as a chartered accountant in the field of stock markets. Then I shifted to the income tax and then I got an opportunity when Venkat's senior partner, the FR Singh, was traveling abroad and there was not a single faculty who could teach CST for the CST students in Bangalore. And that was the time I said that there's a huge vacuum in indirect taxes and I had to enter into it and I started becoming a speaker and before that I purchased the Chaturvedi's book and started reading the book on CST and that's my journey to indirect taxes. As of today, if you ask me, I hardly work. I give five days a month to my office and we have a few businesses also in which we are involved into. So 20 days a month I am mostly to social services and travelling. Uh, I can just quote one thing that when Kathmandu had its earthquakes of 7.9, 7.3 and 6.7, I was very much there at the epicenter, enjoying the beautiful jerks. And uh, believe me, that was one of the most beautiful days I spent in Kathmandu, not because of the tragedy, but because I could be a lot of help. Uh, within two hours of the earthquake, we were able to serve 2,000 people food after 7.9. And that was all because of the charitable organizations which I was connected with. And more than 5 to 10 crores, we got donations. I got personally donations which were routed to the MP of uh, Nepal. Through her Rajya Sabha member, we routed the funds and got the services done across. Uh, I had personal experiences with the national. I had a dream at that time of setting up, uh, along with the tie up with the National Disaster Management Academy, uh, wherein I thought that across the country, youths could be collected, they could be trained to handle disaster management, and then they could basically execute it wherever there is a tragedy. That was my dream for my college days. Uh, when this Nepal tragedy happened, I had an opportunity of meeting the secretary of uh, NDMA and uh, he volunteered to go ahead with us for a tie-up with an, another social organization of mine. Unfortunately, I couldn't take it forward because setting up that organization took me a longer time of 70 branches across India. But uh, the whole concept was we trained the youth and then help them to be into disaster management and that could be a huge concept which I'm sure now that I'm going back from retirement from my social organizations, Another two years down the line, I should again work back on that particular concept in Doha class. And Pooja told that I'm writing another book. I'm writing a book called A Man Who Failed Many Times. Uh, if you see the amount of success I would have got, could be huge in terms of practice, in terms of uh, businesses we have done, in terms of movies we have made, in terms of winning international awards, 11 international awards, two Guinness Books of World Records, all that in making movies. So been into varieties of businesses in life, made a lot of losses, made a lot of mistakes and enjoyed life thoroughly but still into it. So writing a book called A Man Who Failed Many Times and this book is based on the mantras of success of a failure man. What are the success mantras and along with that I am also using the Jain philosophy as a principle of business mantras. And so I am basically now moving around the country giving talks on these topics so that it's interesting and uh, helping me learn about Jainism also, helping me learn about the business mantras, started reading also. So this is a brief introduction about me. Uh, into businesses, yes, I sell food, we are into software, we are into media, we are into real estate, we are into money changing, all official businesses. Huh? <laughs> okay, that's uh, a brief introduction and uh, now if anybody is a good singer, anybody would like to share some jokes, anybody would like to contribute something else, and uh, let's have the environment a little lightened so that we enjoy the evening before we go for dinner. So, can we? Huh? You want to go or want to sing, dance, talk? Uh, yeah. So, with this, I think we also conclude the quiz round. Uh, Pooja, I don't think you have got the prizes. Tomorrow you will be getting the prizes. A wonderful job done and we would acknowledge team number four. The fourth team which came across is team B with 10 points, a wonderful job done, they were uh, doing a good job where they lost in between, congratulations you did a good job, we all learned along with you and then we had team C 
which was at 25 points. I think that one question hit you badly, others you could have been at the top lines again. The negative 25 marks you got across, I think so. Yeah, so that you missed out across. Team A was doing very well, but uh, again, gamblers don't survive. Gambling is bad. Gamblers only survive, so they came number 2 at 55 points. A good job done. Yeah, 15 to 55 was the gambling round, which they did a wonderful job. And ladies and gentlemen, we present the lady and the gentleman winning the first prize. Adhika Agarwal and, and Shiv Kumar, two of them who held their foot across, got the 70 points, became the number one, the difference between one and two, 15 points, which mattered the most. And they also took the risks. Thank you very much. Wonderful job done. And I also thank my co-quiz master Rajesh Puja, the scorer for the day. And uh, with the permission of all of you, a small memento from the ICAI for Rajesh sir for being part of this quiz and uh, for not gambling. Thank you very much. Thank you audience for, and friends for a wonderful time together, a learning session. And if we felt that the answers were not as per what you expected, forget it. Thank you. <laughs>